Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today, we are going to be talking about this uh, issue where women will not give out their phone numbers, some women, not all, of course, on dating apps, and why they do that and what to conclude. And before we do that, I must tell you to subscribe. My most recent subscriber episode was why your partner sends you so many memes and videos. And I talk about both sides of that and how both people can change. The um, the the link happy giver of the memes and the very frustrated, overwhelmed receiver of the memes and how to think about each perspective and why people do this in the first place. All right, so let us move into our topic for today. So in the Facebook secret group, which you should be part of, it's great conversation, $4.99 a month, blue subscribe button on the Facebook page. Um, There was a discussion about why women don't give out their numbers on apps, right? And uh, there's so many reasons women don't want to give out their numbers. Apparently, if you Google a number, you could get everything. But this is somebody that you are intending to meet. (laughs) So I'm not saying that the number should be like, you know, the first thing in your profile, in your Tinder profile, in your bio, or whatever app you use. Okay, Cupid is where I met my husband. I've mentioned that a few times. Um, But anyway, uh, the point is, like, you, you're apparently, people are talking on the app and then the guy says, can we move this to text, which is like, you know, an upgrade. You don't have to keep opening up the app, look at your kids like events, you know, and stuff. You don't always have to be opening like Tinder or whatever to talk to the person. So you're actually maybe going to you know, meet up. Like, that's why you're talking. You've talked enough to know, uh, messaged enough to know that you want to meet up. Now, you should meet up right away. Right away. There should not be any extended pen pals. I've been very, very clear about that. I've done multiple episodes on dating and all of this. So do not be somebody's pen pal. You are just going to, that's terrible. Because what if you really click with them over typing, but then you don't click with them at all in person, then you just wasted a whole fucking bunch of time. And you're likelier to try to get along with the person you're not attracted to, because otherwise, it would be this huge sunk cost and people are not rational actors economically. So you would be likelier to end up marrying this guy that you're not very attracted to just because you texted with him for like three weeks. And he was so awesome. You told all your friends about it. And it feels really depressing and shallow to just break up with him because you're not attracted to him when in reality of course that's what you should do because you will end up in a sexless marriage but I digress point being so you're talking to somebody for a long time and then they say let's you know move it to text and apparently women don't want to do that because they're scared of him they're scared he's going to google their phone number now I mean maybe I'm not the right person to empathize because all my shit is all over the internet and that's how I build my business you know also we can block people now you know I mean what's he gonna do he's gonna send you a dick pic I mean anybody who's listening to this podcast you know you've seen a dick before you know you may not have seen one in a while which may be why you're listening but you know you have seen one so you're not gonna die and then you just block them and it's so rare for guys to be assholes like most guys are not assholes you know most guys are regular people they're somebody's son they're somebody's father Most people are not being assholes. And if you think that most guys are assholes, then you got to get to therapy to figure out why. And if it's because all the guys you've been with are assholes, there's a common denominator, you know, and and that's you picking them. And I've talked about this repeatedly, Imago theory, you must have seen one of your parents treat the other one bad and you assume relationships are shit. And so you're drawn to somebody who treats you bad. But point is, most guys are not assholes. They're not going to stalk you. They're not going to do anything terrible to you. You know, you give them your phone number because you're going to meet up, right? And that would be the only reason because you're moving this to meeting up. How reasonable is it that you would meet them? So let's say they are a sociopath. They're going to kill you. Well, you just met them. So they're going to kill you, right? Like in real, like they're going to kill you when they see you. That's that's the part that's so scary. Well, they're going to do that anyway because you agreed to meet them. So how is the phone number worse than meeting them? It just doesn't make any sense. So my point is it's a hallmark of anxiety and rigidity. When people are scared of the world, 
They're going to end up being scared of your penis and you do not need that. You, if you're listening to this and you're single, you already been in a marriage that didn't work out. Likely if you're a man, it was because it was a low sex marriage and or she was anxious and rigid. Those are like massive reasons that men are no longer married to, to the women that they were with. Those are the biggest things that bother men, low sex and anxious slash rigid. So then she's literally telling you, she's saying, you're asking something reasonable to text instead of to have to open up Tinder every time we want to communicate because our relationship is progressing to where we are going to meet up. And I am scared of that because I feel that you will Google my phone number and you will find out things about me, things that I would, of course, tell you when we met up. Um, because people talk when they meet up. It's not like you go on a date and the guy's like, oh, so what do you do? And you're like, can't tell you yet. And they're like, where do you live? And you're like, "Mm mm-mm, I see where this is going, sociopath. Like, that isn't how you're going to interact. So point is, if you're really scared of a phone number being Googled, perhaps you should be focused on therapy for anxiety and rigidity. You know, there's a lot lot of uh, people think that, and I talk about this in my podcast, The Cult of Boundaries and Preferences, they think that as long as you say, like, you have a preference, that it doesn't mean that you're being rigid. Of course it does. What's somebody with 100 preferences if not being rigid? Boundaries. Oh, good. So you have all the boundaries in the world. Take your boundaries out on a date. You can because you want to be with a person, but your boundaries may be stopping you because your boundaries are, are so, so vast. <laughs> there are so many of them. So you're not going to be a laid back person that just doesn't give out your phone number. That just like is is not a thing, you know. So it's like these guys that tell me they had a good sex life before they got married. And they wonder what happened. I was like, oh, you had a good sex life? Uh, Yeah, we really did. There's a lot of, you know, there's things she wouldn't do, you know. Like what? Like oral, like um, other positions, like put the light on, like, you know, um, like anything with... uh, in any sort of adventure, any kink, any exploration, like tell me her fantasies, like masturbate, like mutual masturbation. I'm like, what the hell was your good sex life? What am I missing? No, but whenever I wanted to, she said yes. It's like, listen, there are proxy variables in this world. And one of them, I'm telling you, is somebody with a million boundaries. And one really strange one is not giving out your phone number. You can block someone, you know? What are they going to find out? Why do you think that out of a two-second interaction, what is the likelihood of this guy being like a complete sociopath that's going to Google your phone number and what are they going to do with it? They're going to come to your house. What are they going to do at your house? If Why then do you go to Giant to get your food? Any man could see you there and follow you home. And do whatever they're going to do. I mean, like, you can't live like that. You can't live being scared of the world. And if somebody tells you they don't want the phone number, just be done with it. Thank God in heaven that they gave you such a clear sign that they're anxious. Just be happy. Say, no problem. Best of luck. That's it. And if enough guys do that, then women may have to, you know, confront that this is actually an anxiety thing because it's an anxiety thing, right? And it's just an anxiety thing. And people that don't see it as an anxiety thing have other anxiety things. If you have a million boundaries within the first couple of, of like, days of talking to somebody on the internet, then Why? What are they going to do? Why do you think they would find you so compelling that you would become, you know, the person that they wanted to Google and go to the house of? I mean, it just doesn't make it make any sense. Of course, there's crazy people out there, but there's crazy people everywhere. How then can you go to work? How then can you go to the grocery store? How can you do anything? There's crazy people everywhere. We just cannot live thinking and trying to protect constantly against ever uh, in interacting with somebody in a way that might make us quote uncomfortable, which you know I've already told you is the word that is a proxy variable for anxiety, uncomfortable. So if somebody, so so what are some other ones you might say? So if somebody says like, oh, I have um, I I have like a I I only meet for coffee. You say you want to get a drink. They say I only meet for coffee. Fuck them. What do you need that shit in your life for? That is so rigid. It's so rigid. 
it's cool that they like to meet for coffee, but why won't they go to the bar? They don't have to drink. They could get French fries. They could do whatever they want. But you suggested something. They could say, I'd rather get coffee. But what if, you know, I don't know. Like, fuck that. That's a stupid thing to say. I'm thinking about it now, and it's kind of stupid. You suggest something. So generally, you would want an open-minded, flexible person. Sure. The only thing is it's like an hour from their house. They don't want to go there. Fine. I get it. You don't want to drive like a you know a million miles away at night or whatever. Or maybe they have a babysitter, you know. Or maybe they are divorced and they do not have their kids or rather, they do have their kids, so they cannot meet for drinks in the evening. They can only meet for coffee during the day if they want to meet you today or tomorrow. But if you wait until the weekend when they don't have the kid one night, then they can meet you for a drink. That sounds like a reasonable, flexible thing to say, right? But anybody who says, I only do X, no, 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 this is stupid. Arbitrary rules are indicators of rigidity and closed mindedness. Especially when they make no sense, right? Because you, a drink could be the same amount of, co- of time as a coffee date. So if somebody says, I only do X, that is another one. So basically, this entire uh, podcast could be subsumed in, forget like the phone number, I never give out my phone number. Whenever people say, I only do this or I never do that, it is like a bat signal. You should immediately think, uh-oh, anxious person, rigid person, And that would be so much better. (laughs) So you would know already, oh, anxious, rigid person. And if she's hot, I know none of my rules that I tell you about like what to look out for. You won't listen to any of them if she's hot, if you are a man. But then after the bloom wears off the rose, maybe at least you will think, oh my God, she was showing indicators of rigidity and anxiety from the beginning. And maybe this is not my soulmate because we've also already started to fight over the fact that everything has to be her way. I have a a post that says everything in your relationship can be understood through the lens of your first meeting. And since I have seven zillion podcasts, I don't remember whether I made a podcast about it. It doesn't strike me that I did. But the entire thing could be explained in this. The way that you interact in the very, very first messages on a dating app and the very first date, certainly, but even the time before the date, all of that is data. Be like a therapist. Therapists are observing from the very beginning. If somebody reaches out for therapy and it's almost impossible to schedule with them, they are likely a difficult person. They are not a flexible person. And that is something that I assume we will be addressing and usually start addressing relatively shortly in therapy because their wife probably has the same problem with them or their husband, right? That that everything that they suggest, the person shoots down. I understand if it's a person is like an ER doctor and they work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but I actually have ER doctors. I have physicians that take, do the session with their freaking mask on, you know, or they take it off for that, but they're in their scrubs because they take 45 minutes out. So of course it can be done. People can be flexible. So if the person that you are talking to on your dating app is not flexible, and has rules, and has restrictions, and then you feel yourself feeling enlivened by the challenge, do do not stop, do not pass, go, go immediately to therapy. And the first question out of your mouth to your therapist is, why do I go after difficult people and fantasize about changing them into less difficult people? Oh, Dr. Psych Mom says it's because of my family. Can we explore that? That's immediately what you should do. Because There are these women and men that tell you basically within the first couple of seconds that they're going to be difficult because it's impossible to schedule with them. They won't give you their phone number. They can only do Tuesday at 7, and it's only the first Tuesday of the month. And they also don't like this, and they don't like that, but they only like this, and they only like that. And then you feel your heart racing faster. That's because you had a difficult parent and you fantasized as a child about making them more flexible and open-minded and you never could. So now your imago is a difficult person and then you try to make them less difficult. Has it worked yet? No, it's never gonna. So stop. So now you know. The more crazy, you may not recognize it as crazy, so just count. Be like, how many times does this person say no or never or always or have to or can't? All the boundaries. The more boundaries, the worse your relationship's going to go. Because they're not boundaries. They're rigidities. Rigidities. A boundary is something like, oh, we just met. I'm not going to introduce you to my kids. 
oh shit, that makes sense, right? I mean, another person could potentially get involved, if, you know, and get hurt. Oh yeah, we're meeting on Tuesday, not introducing you to my kids on Wednesday, no matter how good Tuesday goes. Hey, that's a boundary. You know what's a rigidity? I only have sex after five dates. The first two dates must be coffee. We also have to hike. That's like, fuck you. Don't get with that person. Do not get with a two coffee date, one hike, five dates. Don't. Why? There are women out there that will just take it as it comes. And they will take things as it comes in life and be flexible and open-minded there as well. All right. Well, I think I made my point. I made my point very clear. The more rigidities, the more scared they are, the more they're uncomfortable, the more they're anxious. Just fast forward to 10 years. Everything you want to do, they're going to be anxious. They're going to be scared. They're going to be upset. They're going to be negative. No, you don't need that. You don't need that. And listen, the same thing is gender inverted. Not that men do that. Men really do try to be flexible. But because men try to be flexible, if you keep being drawn to the men that say, no, I can't meet up on Tuesdays. I could only do Wednesdays, but I can't do this Wednesday. And I can't do this Thursday because I meet uh, my buddies every single Thursday. So I can never meet you on a Thursday. And then work, I actually have to do my, I I get up to bike at 4 a.m. on Sunday. So I can't go out Saturday night. You like, see you later, motherfucker. There are so many more fish in the sea that do not have a schedule that I already have to compete with and we're not even dating yet. So get out of Dodge with that too. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this and it was useful to those of you on the dating market and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.